Previously on Hard Knocks, the pain of the NFL preseason continues. No. Man, I gotta, I gotta make the stinking team. I can't be hurt, you know? My ultimate goal is not to make the practice squad for the Dallas Cowboys or any other team in the NFL. I want to play in this league, and I want to be a good player in this league, not just make a team. Scuffle in the weight room. Javier against OG. Yeah, Javier won, <laughs> from what I understand. <laughs> this week, the Cowboys enjoy some good, clean fun before the hard knocks resume. This is not an easy time for me. You know, you have to tell somebody that, that they can't do something. Cowboys life is pretty much just whatever it takes to get it done. Get it sun up to sundown. Can't put it into words what we're gonna go through. It's all day just grinding, trying to make it, make it. There's so much expectation because of the history. history. You're gonna have the pain. The pain's gonna come. Some guys aren't going to make it. There's only going to be 53 at the end. It's a hard luck life playing NFL football, period. Here's what we're going to do. We'll come out this afternoon. We're going to go our normal special team, an individual, and then we're going to do a seven on seven, and then we're going to do a 30 to 45 minute scheme period. Now, now, after that, after that, we're going on a little team function. No meetings tonight. Here's what we're going to do. You come over here, bring your stuff with you, wear something old. You don't care if it gets dirty. It don't matter. Now, there's be some girls where we're going, possibly. Possibly. Hold it. So use some common sense. You never know. You never know. But hey, 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 bring some old stuff. Believe me. Wear some stuff that you don't care what happens to it. Everybody on the same page? No one had warned the players that this season, being a Cowboy, would mean being a Cowboy. I think everybody was a little bit bothered with the whole situation. You couldn't really see a whole lot of fun going on, you know, for, for a football team for 92 guys. Initially, guys would say, oh, God, what are we going to do? And we got a lot of guys that aren't ranchers. <laughs> oh, you suck! Oh, you suck! Hey, man, it be A stomach problem. Okay, let's get ready for the cow chip tossing competition. Oh, cow chip? That's doo doo. This is a cow, this is a cow oh, chip co competition. Yeah. How far you got to throw it? Robert ought to win the boat. That's a cow chip, boys. That's a cow chip if I've ever seen one. It don't smell bad. For form and accuracy, no one can toss a cow chip like Coach Joe Avizano. It was probably one of the better performances of the evening. Every toss had a certain look about it. If you ran it in slow motion as it came down in the ring, it just fell very nicely and softly. And I proceeded to go five for five. Katie, throw a soft, dog. Oh, hey, another one. Hey, no soft yet. Okay, we got some. I'm not going to get eggs. I'm going to stay behind this truck. Oh, oh. The players see to it that no cow chips go to waste. Hey, we need some more pies, man. Hey, wait, hey, wait a minute, hold on. Get the eggs. 
The final event was my favorite when we had to dress the pig into the in the Washington Redskin uh, uh, jersey. That was uh, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Reminded me of my childhood. I want to chase the pig, man. <laughs> oh my God. The best thing for me was uh, just to watch the guys uh, in that final event, in that uh, pig dressing contest. Uh, you know, just watching the guys uh, working together as a team, trying to get that thing done, and just having a good time away from football. What else, man? It was, it was crazy, dog. That was no place for a black person, dog. None whatsoever. I'm serious. Y'all take some greased down pigs. Greased up pigs, armadillos. Uh, people was riding cows like they were horses, dog. Ooh, like on the team? Yeah. <laughs> they threw some eggs at Pep. Pep jumped the fence, dog. You know his groin jacked up. Yeah. He jumped the fence. I thought he was going to fall. It was out of control. Every day, nothing but stretch, stretch, stretch. Run, run, run. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Run, run, run. Stretch, stretch, stretch. <laughs> Don't ever do anything. Devrin Johnson, number 13, is fighting every day to stay on the roster. You got that one, P. <laughs> it's a fight that often pits Johnson against his friend and roommate, Pete Hunter, number 47. All right, all right. There you go. Hey! Pete! <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's go. <laughs> All right, I always tell her, yeah? Okay, Pete Hunter, come on, Devron Johnson, catch the damn football. He doesn't have anything to me that time and coaching is not going to cure. He'll have days that you say, eh, I don't know. But he's so raw and green, I just don't think you need to give up on this guy. Uh, this is a giant step for this kid. It's a giant step. And, and he has some things. There are times you go out there, you see him in one-on-one, -on -one, he does some great things. Now come on back! Come on back! There you go! He's improved tremendously from when he first started uh, back in the mini camps. A lot of his things is attention to detail. He just, you just made your second move way too late. You got to make up your mind way earlier than that. There are times when he shows that he's coming on. And there are times when, when he seems to have hit a wall. What the hell is Dev doing? Again, it's more mental than it is physical because it's a lack of focus. A small college player with only two years of football experience, Johnson has much to learn. Don't wide him so wide. Tighter? Okay. I thought it was a little bit close. All right, a little bit more there. Nasty. All right. What is nasty? Real, real close. What is nasty by number? 95 or five yards. Maximum. Maximum five, all right. He has to go back at night okay. to the wee hour of the morning. He has to burn the candle on both ends. He has to go to sleep with that playbook and come out there when corrections have been made and work on those things. Work on the attention to detail things that I made mistakes on the day before. You're on, 13. You're on. Fix something. Fix one thing. Repeated mistakes will not cut the mustard. As a rookie, Johnson is behind Randall Williams, who played seven games for the Cowboys last season and who has impressed the coaches this summer. That guy runs the fastest stem in this team. He runs faster than Rocket. He runs fast. I mean, he's on it. A guy like that, this guy explodes off the line. Williams has such a quick start, he literally runs right out of his shoes. Oh! Good. Uh, damn new shoes. One of the fastest guys I've ever seen. I mean, he can flat fly. He has good hands. I wouldn't say great hands. Whoa. I understand the, the thought of the big kid 
who can run and cover kicks, but I, I don't know if he'll ever be a great route runner. Go Randall. Go with plant and roll. Mm -hmm. you pull your arm. Okay. When you come out, it's when you come. You gotta find it. Okay. Somewhere, somehow, someone has to do something uh, extraordinary and consistently to separate himself from the pack. Richmond Flowers is about to be separated from the pack, but in a different way. Go, Tony, go, Tony! While running a routine pass pattern, he feels a stabbing pain in his leg. Jeez. Hey, where's Jim? Richmond Flowers pulled his left groin today. Be, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, there's no defect there, but uh, it's obviously something we have to make sure he can run well and not have a problem with it before we put him back into practice. The injury costs Flowers practice time, time he cannot afford to lose. He sees numbers in front of him, veteran players, players with a lot of speed and a lot of talent, and he's starting to be overcome by that rather than just saying there are going to be X amount of spots. No one has been given uh, a job yet outside of Galloway and Ismael. I don't think they have Julie, look at your veteran's feet. Go. Iris, pivot turn. And I know I'm screaming at you, but you've got to take charge. One, is it two? One, two. Three and four. It's like y'all want to go one, two, three, one, two, three, and four. And that time, since I told you the mistake before, it's like you freaked out this time. If there's a hair in your mouth and sweat dripping down your face, it has to stay there. You don't have to run off like there's a fire. Just look pretty going off and walk with pretty feet and punch you pom-poms. So I want y'all to run this twice and run all those good. And if you're good, you can have an early night. <laughs> She's gonna do it one more time and then she'll be ready to go, okay? Aww. Real fast, give her a hug. Hurry, She's hurry, go go. Go. Is that your baby girl? Uh-uh. No. <laughs> okay, hug your mama. Oh, here they come. When you, uh, when you hang around, talk to, listen to champions, I believe it rubs off. I believe it rubs off. Uh, I want to introduce a man to you that has been where we're trying to get. He's here to uh, sign up uh, Javier Collins to a contract. <laughs> Guy's a former heavyweight champion of the world, George Foreman. Hey, uh, people ask me all the time, you kind of walk funny, George. I say I walk funny because I didn't leave anything undone. I wanted my championship belt. I didn't want to be one of those guys who got 200,000, 500,000 invest in a trucking company and a hamburger store. I wanted to be the heavyweight champion of the world. And you got this splendid opportunity right now to put those rings on your finger. And I don't care if you walk funny afterwards, you're going to love it. But don't leave nothing undone. You'll be 50, OK, 39 years old like me. <laughs> And you'll be proud of the way you walk if you give it all you got. Texas has two teams now, but America has only got one. That's right. You are America's team. Every time you win, we feel better about ourselves. I'm hungry for you. I want to feel like a Super Bowl champion. I want you to win this thing. Where's Harvey? Yeah. Where's Harvey? Come up here. <laughs> Okay. All right, guys, let's go to work. Pete Hunter, number 47, was a small college safety. 
The Cowboys drafted him to play cornerback in the NFL. Good job, Pete. I think I'm getting better every day. Uh, they're throwing a lot of things at me right now to see how I'm going to handle things. Pete Hunter's gone straight in the tank. He was on his inside, but he didn't bump in. He doesn't know what he's doing. Get his ass out of there. Get him out of there. 47, get his ass out of that underneath. I didn't hear the promotion. Well, I, that's the way it is yeah. the game. Let's go, Hunter. Give you one more try. Hunter, we'll give you one more try. Get over here. You know what? That makes me happy. That makes me happy. Because you screwed that up yesterday and you got it right today. That's good. I don't like to see wrong two days in a row. That's good. Every time I talk to the media, I say we got a bunch of corners that are, that are pretty good. They got a few things they do good, and there's a few things we got to work with. Look at it intelligently, and you draw your line of who you're going to keep. Then who are the best cover guys that we've got? Just pure cover. Forget the scheme. I go to a rookie, Pete Hunter. Really like him. Excellent rookie prospect. Definitely keep, in my opinion. The guy's probably got the best upside of all of them is Hunter. And Goodrich, because of injury, we don't know much about, near enough about. Dwayne Goodrich, number 23, was once a promising cornerback. But after two seasons shortened by injury, Goodrich is an enigma. He's not a rookie, but he's not a true veteran either. That's been a story for the last couple of years, just, well, this guy, he can't really stay healthy. Like, as far as, like, if you ask me something in the playbook, nine out of, I say 80% of the time, I'm going to know it as far as go linebacker, safety, and corner. But I get on the field, and it be happening so fast, my mind don't register because I haven't seen what it looked like when somebody shifts the speed of the pace. All right, Goodrich, get in there. Here's the wheel. Post. You can't play when you're injured, but you can play through a little bit of pain. So that's kind of what I'm doing now, just going out there, showing them that, hey, I still want to be here, and I'm still going to try and go out there and make plays. Yeah, that was as fast as I could run. He just is not you know, consistent every single play, but at times he flashes, and I think if, if we get him out there in some games and some situations, hopefully we can see him and, and make an evaluation on him. Okay. Where's, where's good, Richard? Your well, he's looks better to me. Well, there's a point. <clears throat> uh, we will be at the cutting time, hurt or not, on this 53-man cut. We hope, we hope, we think we're going to be down to that. And if today we were right where we are with Goodrich today relative to these others, relative to some of the others, he has played what he's played. Let's just say we we're right where we are today. We think he can play when he gets to play. Uh, unfortunately, before I came in here, I just watched the last year's preseason game against Oakland, and it wasn't a good game for him. And so I've, right now is not a good time to ask me. Because <laughs> we got a blitz. Oh, zone. Coaches can teach technique, but for a lesson in attitude, sometimes it helps to bring in an expert. I heard y'all needed some corners. You know, I could do this in my sleep. <laughs> That's a real pass rusher right there. Yeah. You're doing good on TV, man. You're looking good. You're handling things. Look at, look at, hold on. You look trim. You know, TV will do that for you, man. You get on TV and get trim. Get your ass out there. That guy runs the wheel. It's a touchdown. That's the Zim I know. I don't know who that imposter that showed up on Hard Knocks the first week. Guys, <laughs> you guys, you're not doing it right. The Zim I know, oh, my God. He call you everything, your mama, your daddy. Yeah. He get out here in front of TV. Guys, you know, uh, look at Woody over here. <laughs> Can I introduce you to a dude named Longevity? <laughs> Dion works with Dwayne Goodrich and Pete Hunter, fine-tuning their footwork and their mental approach. You waiting on yourself not to make a mistake. Y'all playing not to make a mistake. Y'all ain't playing to make plays. You playing not to get beat. It ain't one of you right here right now is playing knowing you're going to go on that field. I'm going to make a play when these lights on, these people are packed in the stand. <laughs> you gonna make no play like that. And you know I'm telling you the truth. You worried about getting beat. You worried about somebody getting behind. How can you make a play like that? Who gonna step up and say, I'm gonna make a play? And you're scared, man. <laughs> An offensive coordinator can smell fear like a shark-nosed blood, man. 
you got to get your confidence up, fellas, but your confidence starts in practice. Because if you don't do it in practice, there ain't no way you're going to do it in the game. Somebody make a play, baby. Somebody make a play. A play don't care who make it. Somebody make a play. Hey, they gave me the power to cut somebody, too. I just want y'all to know. Let me see you, 4-7. Work your game. Oh, rip it. That's nice, Poe Sal. He was like one of my role models, so I mean, just seeing him out there and him coaching me to make me a better pe person and a better player, I mean, I really paid attention to him, and he's been a great help with me. That boy could play, man. He just got to get his confidence and his feet up on him. That injury took a lot out of him. Once you hear Deion say it, you kind of believe it gives you an extra little um to your game that, you know, just going out there and having confidence is the whole key. You got to believe on three. One, two, three. Believe! Hey, Brian, you come out here every day, man. I know. <laughs> the pay ain't good enough for coaches, though. I would, though. Yeah. Sign some autographs! Right out. Right Sign some autographs! Hey, coach, how you doing? Good. How you doing? Pretty good. You enjoying yourself yes, down sir. here? Beautiful. All right. The Cowboys' first training camp in San Antonio has drawn more than 175,000 fans to the Alamo Dome. And they have devised some ingenious ways to get close to their heroes. There you go. Okay. Write it on my shirt. Write it on my shirt. Write whatever you want on my shirt. Do people have a job these days? What time is it? The Cowboys have to choose between last year's kicker, Tim Cedar, number six and rookie Billy Cundiff, number three. you got to make that decision. I mean, I don't like it, obviously. I haven't liked the way we've kicked at all, either one of them. So as far as I'm concerned, whatever you think is best, we do. Under coach Steve Hoffman, the Cowboys have used six different place kickers in the past nine seasons. Cedar has held the job for two years, but he knows the Cowboys will not hesitate to replace him if they feel the rookie has more potential. But you just got to kind of deal with it. They all understand that uh, it's a tough business and that one of them's going to make the team, one of them's not. I think I've been in a lot of these places that we've played in. I've experienced a lot of the, the different types of pressures, and I think that's a big plus for me. A perfect day, T-Bone. Don't mess it up. Maybe, man. That's it. I keep scoring the fact that if Tim misses, I know I have to make it. And if uh, Tim makes it, well, then I know I have to make it. That's it, Billy. Let the pressure get to you. All right, good start. Here we go. For the most part, the teams don't care who the kicker is, just so the kicker can help them win. It's pretty much that way in the NFL. Cundiff has shown us a strong leg and real good range. Now we have to find out just how that is from a consistency factor. Hey, curve, curve. Okay, all right, let's, let's see you step up tonight. I want to. That field goal period, I want you to drill them for me, all right? You know, every time I put them out there, I'm looking at how they handle pressure. We try to create some of that in practice by every time we kick, having the team surrounding them. Let's get a little bit of noise going here. Game winner right here, baby. See if they can handle uh, being criticized. See how they take it. They're going to make both of them. Focus, the outside. There's one of them. Because if they can't take the heat at practice, then it's going to be interesting how they would handle with the pressure of performing on national TV, et cetera. Five dollars for 50 yards. He'll clear. I just bet he misses. Happy birthday, Roy. Heavy on the stomach. You might as well give it to me. Too disrespectful. What do you say you got the yellow jersey? Yeah, that means that he, mean? he's uh, the he's captain the of the defense uh, today, on his birthday too. He gets to be the leader on his birthday. He finally made. He finally made a tackle. What's up, Lance Armstrong? Y'all see Lance Armstrong in the yellow? Nice job, Roy Williams. That a baby. Good job, Roy. Nice job, Roy Williams. I'm tall, boss. Dead man walking. I'm lying like a... Let's go. The Cowboys are on the road for the second week of the preseason. It's time for work and for the coaches, a time to rest. Tonight, the Cowboys will play the Carolina Panthers. A win would give Dallas its first 2-0 preseason start since 1989. 
That was the year Jerry Jones bought the team. Now we got a number of things that we got to get accomplished tonight. Now, number one is to continue with the mental discipline and concentration. We're going to have a number of learning experiences. We're playing on the road for the first time this year. We're also going to play in some bad weather. That means we got to keep our poise. There's going to be some noise, and there's going to be some weather situation. That shouldn't mean a darn thing to us. All we got to do is just go out and play. Let's win this one. Let's go. Let's go to work. Let's go. Keep an eye on the Cowboys. They will kick off, and you get an idea of what they're thinking on this roster with some of the young guys that Babe was talking about, because they're going to be on this kickoff unit here. And generally, if you get on this first kickoff unit, the Cowboy coaching staff's thinking, hey, they may be on this 53-man roster. I want to see who's going to be here. I want to see by what you're doing. Knockout on three. One, two, three. Knockout. For Pete Hunter, number 47, special teams means double teams. Double team, double team. On special teams, I just went all out. I just ran full speed every time I was out. I will say this, and it's very good for Pete Hunter. He was better in game two than he was in game one. I'm pretty sore right now, but I just enjoy being out there playing, competing. Well, other than the star that's already on his helmet, I, I wouldn't be putting a lot of stars on his helmet just yet as a reward. On this August night, one solo tackle would be reward enough. It's not going to Come on now, we got to get a little juice going here. This is how we'll get it on the kick return. Randall Williams may be the fastest cowboy, but not on this kickoff return. We're trying to be cute. Get out there and run like hell. My number one priority was just to catch the ball and make sure I didn't fumble it. And then uh, anything on top of that, if I got positive yardage, then, then great. Go, 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 go. He ain't running. He got no feel for it. He's got no feel for it or else he's hurt. That didn't look like 4.04 speed there, did it? <laughs> I think you could use the word tentative. We need it. We need it to see him now. Yeah. On kick coverage, Williams shows the speed and all-out effort the coaches want. And when he lines up at wide receiver, that speed draws a pass interference penalty. Carter going upstairs for Randall Williams, who will get a flag. And a guy with that size and that speed, now he's not a polished receiver, far from it, but boy, you'd like to keep him around and try to polish him up a little bit because he can flat fly. Let's go. I think I had uh, more energy than probably anybody. I was just so excited to get on the field. All right, baby. All right. Let's get this thing going. All right. Coach, he's telling us, you know, don't let him go inside. And I was like, that he's not going outside. And I got the holding call. I don't want to ever cheap shot anybody, but at the same time, I want to show the coaches I'm ready to play. But I give myself a B plus right now. Primary. The guy's by you. We don't have to grab the this guy. The guy is by you. We got him blocked. Why well, you got to grab him? For Dwayne Goodrich, number 23, this is a critical step on the road back. Dwayne actually has got a lot better in the last week and a half. He's showing signs of life. Uh, now we got to get him making plays and making tackles. I definitely missed way too many tackles and didn't, didn't just play aggressive enough really for myself. Well, you have to remember that uh, Dwayne has been really basically out of football for two years, hasn't played any at all. And Hopefully he'll be able to, you know, improve enough with experience of being out there to uh, overcome those kind of things. There is no one more alone than a cornerback. Smith has left Muhammad outside right, looking again for Smith deep. Single coverage this time. Unless it's a cornerback who has just given up a touchdown. Beating Dwayne Goodrich for 30 yards. You see, Smith just runs a straight takeoff route. Nothing special about it. You can beat a guy on that route. That guy's going to get beat on a lot of routes in the NFL. 
Let's check in down with Steve Dennis. Well, I thought it interesting since Goody's one of the guys fighting for a job here that uh, after he got burned on that touchdown play there, he got a cold reception on the bench. Not a single coach said a word to him. Not a single player said a word to him. The only one who tried was Britt. Britt Brown, the assistant trainer, tried to offer him water, and he didn't want it. So nobody talking to Dwayne Goodrich down here. Let's let Goodrich go another series and then, and then go with the last one with the other guy. One series, one more chance for Dwayne Goodrich to prove he belongs. This time, Goodrich makes the play. Finally had a cornerback make a play. Goodrich showed nice recovery speed. I think I got my swagger back. I got my swagger back. With so many injuries, the Cowboys cannot afford to lose another starter. But for a frightening instant, it appears they do. Gingerly. Now that's He'll not go good. right back down, and that is a terrible sight. Fortunately for the Cowboys, Roy Williams' injury proves to be minor. With the thigh contusion, it's going to get stiffer the more we don't do anything on it. We can keep walking around, and if you feel good on it, you can go back in. But if it starts to tighten up, you got to let me know. I'm obviously going to be watching it, too. I'm going to go back in. Okay? It happened to be the end of the quarter, so he really never missed a play. He was right, right back out there and, and uh, going after it, and that's what we expect from him. That's the type of player he is. I know there's a lot of high expectations for me. I got a lot of my other teammates looking at me, see how I'm going to handle the pressure. I mean, I think I'm handling it good, but I don't feel like I made the team until that final cut. To survive the final cut, a rookie has to make plays, or in the case of Woody Danzler, Number 35, trick plays. This is what he for the former from Clemson who throws for a touchdown. Uh, he's got 152.1 quarterback rating. He's one for one for one touchdown, 11 yards. Woody's a very versatile guy. That's why he was. that was his play. I hope we can find a spot for him on our roster. It, it remains to be seen because it's going to be close. <laughs> Nice job. As a former college quarterback, Danzler is more comfortable throwing the ball than carrying it off tackle. At five foot ten, he is learning blitz pickup the hard way. And he still has to prove he can stand up to the big boys. No one feels more helpless on this night than Richmond Flowers. Tyson Walter and Scott Zimmerman, who all stayed in San Antonio nursing injuries and watching the game on TV. In the second half, Chad Hutchinson replaces Quincy Carter at quarterback and finds himself in the line of fire. Come on, boys. That's fun out here, huh? Playing behind a line decimated by injuries, Hutchinson is sacked six times and fumbles once. He's got blood coming out of his elbow. He's got blood all over his football pants. They're bandaging him up. It really is a war out there, and that's why it's such a great game, because it's it is a battle, and it's it really you dig down deep into your soul and 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 fight the fight. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a chest. Yeah, just a little everything right now. My ankles, my chest. I don't know why you only get hit on every play. Hey. I think it was a step in the right direction. It's not as good as you think, and it's never as bad as you think. Oh yeah, yay! Hey. You know, I always look at mistakes though, and that's just me being the perfectionist that I am. Tight end. And so I felt like there was a lot of loose ends that I could be cleaned up. Oh, my aching back. Third and two. Sometimes it's a pass the rookie quarterback doesn't throw that annoys the head coach most of all. Get rid of it. Throw the thing away. Throw the ball away. 
Now there was some inexperience because he was outside the pocket. Yeah. He could have just thrown the ball anywhere he wanted to, and he wouldn't have got called for grounding. Matt, I'm trying. Holy. Well, let me just say right now, if the Cowboys got one week of training camp left and making mistakes like this, they're giving Dave Campo every reason to chew on something. <laughs> the game would come down to a kicker's duel, the veteran Cedar and the rookie Cundiff. Get the young guy a rep here and see if he can handle it. Another good angle. He has enough leg. Look at that. Wow. He drilled it. Guys, we've got us a bona fide kicking controversy now. There's a little bit of a pressure kick here for Tim Cedar. It'll be 49 yards. And in his first two years in Dallas, his best has been 48. Good snap this time. Good hole by Noor. The kick with plenty of leg is good, and the fight is really on. Isn't it? Kick it. Kick it. In the fourth quarter, Cundiff ties the game. And Cedar wins it. Tim Cedar, your serve. Good snap and hold. Good kick. And the Cowboys win a preseason game on an opponent's home field for the first time in 10 years. Every game in the NFL is like this. To win a tight ball game, uh, those are just a learning experience for a uh, football team that needs to get back to that mode of uh, operating. First of all, congratulations, you won the football game. And that's what we came down here to do. Yeah. Yes, sir. And let me tell you something. About 80% of the games in the National Football League are just like that. And all it takes is one or two plays either way to make the difference. So let's make sure we continue to work. I'm going to get after you tomorrow or uh, on Monday. Tomorrow you're off. I'm going to get after you now because we got a lot of things to get accomplished. But congratulations <laughs> on a big win because every win is big. Goodrich showed good athleticism, doesn't tackle real well. I don't think he makes the same amount of plays that Jason Bell makes. I think Derek Ross would have made just as many of those plays last night that, that he made and probably, probably wouldn't have gave up the touchdown. In his defense, you know, we played him on the right side in the first half and then moved, moved him over to the left side in the second half. And that, I don't think that was real fair to him in terms of, you know, seeing the, the routes one way and then the second half the other way. But I thought he did a good job making that transition and playing both sides. Dan, sorry, six carries, 14 yards. I don't know whether he's uh, the strong enough runner to consistently carry the football in this league. I think he'd, he'd be a pretty good pass receiver. He stepped up and tried to take the blitzers on. I think he could be that type of a uh, protector. I don't think he'd be a good run blocker in our Corvette package. Devin Johnson played eight plays. He did an okay job. I was pleased with his effort because this is probably probably was his best effort um, since he's been here. Randall Williams played 18 plays. I thought it, he was very timid at times. He never would pull the throttle and let go. Never did uh, use his speed. I thought he he was more timid even on the special teams kick returns. Randall should have been there. He had uh, played 20 20 plays and his plays are all long distance runs. He, he's, he's able to help us as a team uh, in, in an unusual capacity. Richmond, uh, uh, we thought uh, it's best for him and us. He, he has indicated that he would like to uh, uh, get an opportunity to go to another team, which is fair. But if everybody's in agreement with Richmond, uh, we'll uh, visit with him. Mr. Jones, I need to see you. Yes, sir. You got your notebooks with you? Yes, sir. I'll take you up there. Get that out of your hands. Football is a game, but pro football is a business. Teams have a schedule, and on this day, it does not allow roommates to say goodbye. Chad Hutchinson is in a quarterback's meeting, unaware that at that moment, <coughs> Richmond Flowers is being released. I went down to uh, go to uh, special teams meetings, and uh, then I, I talk, saw the, uh, the Turk and uh, brought me up to uh, Jerry Jones. And I saw here kind of the writing on the wall that it wasn't working out and felt that 
I'd have a better opportunity if I was able to get released and uh, keep going after it somewhere else. Um, I have great respect that they did that because a lot of players um, get released there right at the end and, and to just sit there and be a guy for the next two weeks is, is hard to stomach. And uh, I think to be realistic with you, it's going to be hard for you to get on this 53. So I think we're, for uh, both the team and yourself, we're doing the right thing here. Let's give you a chance to see if another team uh, uh, might be interested in you. Uh, I just morning. I just don't want you to think that <clears throat> because I felt like I, it was a good idea for me to to be waived that it's a negative that that I didn't want to be a cowboy. Just I was so tense trying to prove something when I first showed up that I think it um, it kind of hurt me. But I uh, you know I, I really believe in my heart that I can play and uh, and it's just. You know, it's frustrating because it didn't work out here. Well, just because we're sitting here saying, hey, this isn't working out for us this morning, doesn't mean we're right. Yeah. So you keep that in mind. Thanks. Okay. Hey, hey, uh, what's it look like? Do you have a couple other people that, that are talking to you or you have, that you feel comfortable with I, I do. a shot with? I do. I do think that I do. I do think I have some, there's some teams that have should they're going to give me opportunity. Right. I just I felt like after looking at the way things were going with special teams and right. everything and, and numbers wise that you know that I was better off getting an opportunity to see if someone was and I Yeah. All I could say is I appreciate your work ethic and uh, you know the way you go about your business so you know I just want to wish you the best of luck. Thanks. I appreciate right. it. Okay, Richmond. Thanks. All right. Good All right. to see you. My dad's always been there for me and um, you know I He's not only my father, but but my best friend, and um, just wanted to call him and let him know. Hello. Hello. Hey. Oh, man. Um, well, I just wanted you to know they they released me, um, so that was kind of a lifting a kind of a lifting a, a foot off my chest because you know how things had had gone. I you know I had asked for my release and and uh, and they felt like that. They wanted to give me that opportunity, give me the opportunity to be picked up by somebody else. You and I both know, knew it was coming. It makes no sense to me, but it just happens. They make up their minds before training camp even comes, who they're going to go with. And what was so I was so concerned about was that was that it wouldn't get to your your heart and your head because you've been you've all your life you've been a fierce competitor. And if they put you in the football game and turn the lights on. Nobody shines any better than you do. You've done it time and time and time again, and it's almost like people don't believe it. He feels the same pain, uh, probably more so than I do right now. Um, you know, I and I understand that, and I wanted to reassure him that don't worry. So far, I've I've taken the dramatic route on everything I've done, and uh, I don't think that's ever going to change. But um, just want to let you know I love you, and uh, don't worry about it. I love you too, man. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, I lost my roommate this morning, but. Uh... You know, I wish him well, and uh, I know he's going to find another, either another team or move on with his life, and uh, you know, there's bigger and better things out there for him, so I wish him the best. The Cowboys are unbeaten in the 2002 preseason, but that's not to say the summer has been without loss. Once there were two sets of dreams in this room. Now, there's only one.